Joining me now to discuss, President of the Jerusalem Washington Center, Gideon Israel, and political activist who's worked closely with both the Meretz Labor and Gesher parties, Moshe Chertoff. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure right. to be here. Moshe, I'm going to start with you, actually. Are, are, do you, are you confident that Lapid can actually pull something off that will be stable? I don't think even he is confident. I don't know if anyone can guarantee when you go into negotiations what will be the outcome of negotiations. And I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Hmm. But uh, I actually see that we've kind of split between two camps, and they're not political parties in this case. There are those who are more, it's, it's more important for them to have uh, a, a democratic government that believes in democratic ideals and therefore will try to erase the rough edges between all of them to be able to make this work. So I just hope that they have the fortitude and the, uh, the guts to stick it out and, and actually make it work. Nobody can tell. So assuming that it could be uh, somewhat stable uh, or long term, do you think that a change block government, even with Yair Lapid and, and Naftali Bennett rotating, would be effective given all the varying ideologies within that group? There would um, be many there would be many places where the government would, would not be effective, but I think the biggest problem um, and the biggest perversion would be that most of the country are right-wing voters, and therefore we would be getting a government where, if it will last out its four years, there would have to be many, many compromises from the right side, from the, from the right-wing side of the, the government. And these are compromises that really don't have to happen because the country is right-wing and the country voted for right-wing. Well, but, th but that being said, I mean, you have, assuming that the change block happens the way that we're putting these numbers together, you have Avigdor Lieberman, you have Gideon Tsar, you have Benny Gantz, you have Naftali Bennett, and Lapid, who's not <coughs> super far left. That's pretty right-wing. No, you, I, I don't think you can count Benny Gantz as, as right-wing. You can... He's center-right. Well, well, I mean, that's another discussion of how to define right, right and left, but I, but I think you're talking about maybe 20 members of Knesset from that government who will be right wing. In reality, you have about 70 members of Knesset who, who are right wing. So I think I think there's many places where members of the of the left wing part of the coalition will be government ministers and they'll have wide broad authority to implement things that really the Israeli population doesn't want. All right. So coming off of that, Moshe, we're seeing reports of, as I alluded to earlier, possible mutinies in the Yamina party saying, you know, we completely reject as we promised before, sitting with Yair Lapid, sitting with Meretz. How do you see that playing out? I'm hoping that the leaders of the parties involved in the negotiations are going to make it clear enough to everyone that what's at, at stake here is the future of the country. I think that these, this new organization, the splinter group called this uh, uh, alternative government, uh, has to realize that the goal is to have stability for the next four years. We're going to have to make all of us on all sides are going to have to make concessions, not just uh, on the right. The left just coming into this is going to have to make concessions. I can say that from being on the left. So uh, hopefully they're going to keep their eye on the goal, on the prize, and say, OK, we'll give up this, we'll give up. That's what negotiations are about. If we didn't, if we didn't need 9 million parties in this country, and 38 were in this last election, uh, then we wouldn't need to negotiate. We wouldn't even have a problem with forming a government. It would be over. But that's the problem. I think it's I think it's important. I think it's important to note that we've we've had a government for the past we've had a government for the past two years. It might not be the ideal way Israeli politics are built, but at the end of the day, there's been a government. They've dealt with Corona. They've dealt with a range of other issues. You see that they're still uh, you know acting against Iran through through various uh, through various um, activities in Iran. You see that they're doing a lot of things. So the idea that there's not a functioning government, it just it just isn't true. And also, the idea, I mean, there, it could be better. The idea also that we're a divided society, I just think is, is not true. We're much less divided than our politicians or even pundits would have us believe. Well, I think I would agree with you with the internal divisions within the population in the country, that overall we're not maybe quite so divided as the politicians would have us believe. But at the same time, in terms of a functional government, we could point to issues of security, but 
you know, we haven't had a budget in years, that, that, and that well, has far-reaching well, implications. Well, I think it's important to note that, a, that a, when there is no budget, so what you have is you have one-twelfth of the previous year's budget going for the next month and for the next month. So in America, I think All it's called... All the special what, and committees I, I, actually, that are not... Actually, actually, it's, actually it's, it's an interesting thing, because I think one of the things you can't do in one of these, you know, uh, governments that's called a ma'avar is that you can't have special handouts to certain places. So in, in that sense, where we might be spending less money and it might be better that way. But that is also including places where we promised to put money, but because the budget didn't pass, they're, they're not right. getting money. So in, not in, necessarily in addition to that, I think if the leaders of the negotiations can take their notes and put them aside about what they want, and just look back at the last few years and understand that there was a health system that was the most important, it, it, it had the most important role in its history, and it failed in many ways. It did succeed. But I know from uh, nursing homes, that it failed in many ways. And we can talk about how few people died, but maybe there could have been less. And we didn't have uh, the, the budget as we should have. There weren't ministers in various uh, uh, positions. They have to look back at that and say, OK, how can we do better? We know we can do better, and we must do better. And they'll have to make that arrangement. So how, so how do we do better? How do we prevent fifth elections? How do we prevent this situation in the future? Uh, there are a few options, but these would require real changes in the Israeli system and in the election system. Uh, we'll have to put a, uh, eventually, we'll have to put a two-term limit on uh, uh, successive terms of prime ministers. I think that we're going to have to reconsider the funding for uh, the political parties by the taxpayers. The, the, currently, the system of funding, of, of, of giving the budget to each party, more or less ensures the status quo. And the smallest parties get, get the smallest amount of money, and therefore, their chances of ever getting larger are much more difficult than the larger parties. There's a few things that need to be done. Um, I, I, it's not going to be easy, for sure. If, if anyone knew how to do it, it would have been done already. Sure. And the main problem is when you're going to vote, for instance, to change allocation, those to get that approved in the Knesset, you're going to have to get those who are going to have to give up power and money to vote for it, and that's not going to be easy. I, I think uh, I, I agree that our, our election uh, system and representation structure is a disaster, and there's two main issues. And the first, the first main issue is that the incumbent politicians and parties have an almost insurmountable advantage, like Moshe said, over new blood trying to get into the system, because that new blood, they need name recognition and they need, need money, which they don't get from the government, and 120,000 votes, which is not so easy to get. And the second problem is our politicians don't represent, our political parties don't represent people. They represent ideologies. There's no incentive to compromise on anything. They don't, all they know is that they represent ideologies. And the minute they move away from those ideologies, then their, consti their constituency is gone. So they also, they also don't deal with the, bi with the big problems, and they don't deal with people's problems. I think that's a bit overstated. There are parties that still have a political agenda, and they have their ideologies, but there are few, uh, not all of them. All right, well, we have 28 days now to see if we can avert fifth elections or not. In the meantime, Moshe Chertoff, Gideon Israel, thank you both so much. Thank you. Yeah.